Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you're watching from. I am Shamika, and I'm here with a word from the Lord. And just another, just kind of like a, uh, I know, kind of like, it's a word from God because it's in his word. So today we'll be in 2 Samuel chapter 6, and we'll be talking about the pair and moving the ark. I was in 2 and 1 Samuel chapter 6, and it talks about how they mishandled the ark of the covenant. They just want to peek in and all that and what God did. How you can't just mishandle him or just think you won't handle him any old kind of way. You know what I'm saying? And what happens when people think they can do that. So today we are, uh, we're in 2 Samuel chapter 6. And we're going to see what happens when it gets back with the children of Israel. Okay. So uh, Father, as we go into your word, I pray that you would speak to us through your word. Lord God, I pray that you would just have your way in and through us, Lord Jesus. That you could just do what only you can. I decrease completely as you increase in me. The floor is yours. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So 2 Samuel chapter uh chapter 6. Peril, come on, peril, okay. Peril in moving the ark. David, again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all those who were with him to Baal, Judah, KJ, carry a journey. You know what? The last time, the last video, we was talking about that. That's the last place the Philistines had it. And they sent it to Beth Shemesh. And Beth then was like, you know, they, they offered the Levites there, offered the sacrifice, whatever the case may be. Then they are now peeking in and he killed 50,070 men. And they were like, well, who can stand before him? <laughs> like, hey, Kir, Kir, Kiri, Jerry, KJ, y'all come on and get it. Come on and get it. Come on and get the ark. Okay. And so here we are. This we are now. Well, this how I'm connecting to and David rose and went with all those who were with him, verse 2, with him to Baal, Judah, carry out Jury, KJ, to bring up from there to Jerusalem the ark of God, which is called by the name, the very name of the Lord of hosts who dwells in throne above the cherubim. They placed the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, who was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were leading the new cart. So they brought it with the ark of God from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Ahio was walking in front of the ark. Meanwhile, David and all the house of Israel were celebrating and dancing before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of fir cypress wood with lyres, harps, and tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. When they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah reached out with his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it because the oxen stumbled and nearly overturned it. And the anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah and God struck him there for his irreverence and he died there by the ark of God. David became angry and grieved and offended because of the Lord's outburst against Uzzah. And that place has been called Perez Uzzah outburst against Uzzah to this day. So David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? David was unwilling to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David with him. Instead, he took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. So the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months. Oh, it's a lot. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household and his family. Oh, it's a whole lot right here. Stay with me, okay? So, KJ and them, they done brought the ark to David and them. So David and them, they happy. And what's the first thing they do? They put it on the new cart. In other words, they mishandle him. They, they, they doing what they want to do. Okay, what was wrong with the old cart? What was wrong with what they had, what was set up already? What was wrong with it? It was not wrong. They were in error, number one, doing that. They totally disregarded that. Ain't nobody, God ain't said that about that. He said that about that. So they go, boom, pulls a new cart because we need to help God out. It need, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of rusty. Mm -mm. It's not aesthetically or pleasing. So we're going to have to, you know, go ahead and get a new cart. So here they are, tambourine. You know what I'm saying? And God like this. You just don't move me. What y'all think? Okay. So, uh, so they go stumbling. They come to a threshing floor. Threshing floor, another 
at, at the threshing floor, that's a, another sign of judgment as well. The, a threshing floor is where they come, they beat the wheat, they separate it, all this there in the third, the chaff. They th like, that's what a threshing floor is. A threshing floor in scripture is a place of separation and revelation. A place where the harvest ha was prepared by spreading the grain from the useless straw for the purpose of exposing and collecting the most valuable part of the crop. So you separate what's good and what's evil. Like you celebrate, you separating what you was usable and what we're going to let throw up in the air and let the air, let the wind blow the chaff, all these different things. Like that's what a threshing floor was. So here they are dancing and all that. And they come to a threshing floor, okay? They come to the threshing floor of Nacon's Nacon threshing floor. And Uzzah, you know, the the the, uh, the the they're on the new cart now. The thing, they, they, the, the calves, they have no problem coming from K, KJ all the way up there. No problem stumbling or none of that. But they want to put them on a new cart. So they put them on a new cart. They get to the threshing floor. They get the stumbling. They get the wobbling and all that. And so the art about to fall. And Uzzah thinking that, you know, he's worthy. Come on now. He go and he try to not let it fall. And he struck dead right then and there. God's anger was kindled against him for irreverence. For not showing reverence. Because who, who are you to save me? Who are, you, who are you to reach your hand out to do anything? Who are you? Because it's a process. It's a, it's a process back in this day for you to even approach the Ark of the Covenant. God. It's, a, it, it's a process. It's a whole thing you got to go to to even approach it. You you got to be a whole. You got to be a, a different type of person to even be able to even. You got to be set apart in a way, sanctified in a way to even be able to approach the. You know what I'm saying? The Ark of the Covenant. So for him to reach his hand out and what's now? I mean, they just dance and having an old good old time, and other get struck dead, and David get mad, and what David do? David said, "You know what." <sighs> You know what? Mm -mm. He did what everybody else did. Move right along. He ain't come to. He ain't come to where we at. And now, nah, uh, uh. If he if he's gonna be like this, now nah, he, he was mad. He and he he was mad and he was afraid. He said, "No, nah, I could just stay around." So they sent to the old bed Edom's house. So that tell me because the Bible don't necessarily say what type of blessings Obed got or how he blessed the house of Obed, but that just let me know that Obed knew how to handle him. Obed knew had a reverence for God. Obed had a, had a had a respect for God. He had a holy reverence and fear for God because for three months God blessed him. He done been all these other it done been all these other different places and they weren't blessed. They were they were judged and his hand came down and people died. People had tumors and they had mice and they had uh struck fifty thousand seventy men dead and other died and all these different like and come on all these things happened but Obed house was blessed. That tell me, cause that's where I'm. Re Obed knew how to handle it. Obed knew he had a reverence for God and for His presence. Come on, man, we be the house of Obed Edom, the presence of God. We have a reverence for Him. We have a, a, a devotion. We have a holy fear of Him, not afraid, but a holy fear of Him, so that we can receive His blessings and not His judgment and not His hand in a bad way. Because we love the hand of God when it's on the right side of judgment. But when it comes down to other stuff and other things, and Him calling us out on our mess, we we feel some type of way. We don't want to have nothing to do with him. Now nah, move, no nah, God, no nah, go on to like we don't want to hit it. We David in a sense. We get mad. We we move along. So. What, what ended up happening? And now King David was told, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed. The, the tea get out, baby. And the ark, we in verse 12. Now King David was told, the ark, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom. And that all that belongs to him because, because of the ark of the God. Because of the ark of God. So Obed house, it turned up over there. It's lit. Yeah, because Obed know how to handle it. Oh, Obed knew how to handle the presence of God. He knew how to handle the only one true and living God. He ain't playing his face. He ain't letting nobody go. He probably, he probably like, ain't no telling what type of parameters he had set up around it. It's no telling. We just know his house was blessed. Them three months it was there. And what David do? So David went up and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed. He said, all right, all right, okay, okay. Let me, let me go ahead. All right, he ain't mad no more. Let me go ahead and get him. Let me go ahead and get it back. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed and Edom into the city of David with rejoicing and gladness. And when those who were carrying the ark of ark of the Lord by its poles, come on, had gone six paces, he sacrificed a an ox and a fatling. What happened to the cart? Okay, so did Obed put him back on his in, in his rifle's place? Did Obed do? Wait a minute, it was on the cart at first. Now he set him up by his poles. Holding it by his paw. 
Carrying the Ark of the Lord by its poles. Because I believe what was set up at first, the cart was what was sent by Bethlehem in the Philistine land. They said it on the cart with the ox and all that and all that. So that right there supposed to have been over and done with. Because they didn't know how to handle them in the first place. That's why they got what they got. But you're supposed to know better. You know how to, you're supposed to know how to handle So Obed put them on some poles. And that's how they was carrying him. Oh, that's good. Holy Spirit. That's good right there. Oh, my goodness. And he goes six spaces and see sacrifice of ox and the family. And David was dancing. He happy now. David was, was dancing before the Lord with great enthusiasm. And David was wearing the linen ephah, a priest's upper garment. So David and all the house of Israel were bringing the ark of the Lord up to the city of David with shouts of joy and with the sound of a trumpet. Then as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, David's wife, Looked down from the window above and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she felt contempt for him in her heart because she thought him undignified. So she, David rejoiced him because he like, we didn't die. We didn't die. We didn't die. We didn't die. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it's giving. Like, we didn't die. God is like, God is good. He blessed the Obed Edom. His anger has, you know, has been, you know, kindled and, you know, has been, you know, like the fire has been put out. So we good now. So he done offered a sacrifice. He dancing and his priestly robes and all that. And she see him and she just like, bro, it's not that deep. They brought in the ark, verse 17. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent, which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. All right, Val, I want peace. I want peace now. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts of armies and distributed to all the people, the entire multitude of Israel, both to men and women, to each a ring-shaped loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people departed, each to his own. It's like he getting away free turkeys and stuff. You know how, come on, you in the hood. You know they getting away free turkeys. Now, like, David is in a good mood, baby. The ark is back in its place, and then nobody die today. God is good, okay? So he passed not look, you know, fruits and, and raisins and cakes and all that. Then they returned to bless his household. But his wife, Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious and distinguished was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself and stripped off his king the robes in the eyes of his servants, maids, like one of the riffraff who shamelessly uncovers himself, like you out here dancing naked in front of the help. Like what? Embarrassing the king? Mm. So David said to Micaiah, it was before the Lord that I hid that I did this. Come on. Who chose me? Come on, David. Let her know. Above your father and all his house to appoint me as ruler over Israel, the people of the Lord. Therefore, I will celebrate in pure enjoyment before the Lord. Yet I demean myself even more than this and will be humble, a base in my own sight and yours as I please. But by the maids whom you mentioned, by them I shall be held in honor. Macau, the daughter of Saul, had no child till the day of her death. That was her punishment. Keep first of all, who you talking to? If they want to dance his clothes off for the Lord because he didn't die, then nobody else died. He celebrated, he offered burnt offers and all these. You don't know where he came from. God chose him over all his brothers, chose him over your daddy, chose him over everybody to be king and all these different things. Like, he, what you mean? You think I'm not going to dance my, out my clothes because I was chosen by the only one truly? He could have chose anybody else. That's why I say with me doing these videos and preaching the word of God and just, you know, all these different, I get to do this whether I feel like it or not because I, it's an honor. Like David said, no, what you mean? I, I would demean myself even more than this. When it comes to God, I don't care about looking goofy in front of him. I don't care about looking stupid in front of him. I don't care about that. I don't, and who... And in front of the main people, to them, it looks, it, to you, it looks stupid. But to them, I'm always be here to honor because I'm the king. Quit playing with me. You talk too much. That's, that's another thing. But my thing is, who who is somebody to come to you when you see everything that the ark had been through? Everything, everybody that had been cursed, killed, whatever the case may be. And here it is in the house of the Obed Edom is blessed. 
you know, his house is blessed. And then David hear about it, he go get it. And then nobody die that day. So David is in like in full celebration mode, like let's go. And he dancing because that's what he do. He dance. That's that's what he do in reverence. They don't care about that. About coming up by his clothes, about looking goofy, uh, looking stupid, or whatever the case may be, for his Lord and Savior. Me neither. May you not care. May we not care. Period. Because it could have been another way. He could have died that day for setting him up on 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 on, on another cart instead of on the pole it's supposed to be set up on. That's God's grace and mercy. Ooh, I'm just saying we can't we can't handle God any old kind of way and think that it doesn't have its consequences. Number one. And number two, when we have a moment where things aren't right, we get it wrong, whatever the case may be, we repent. We offer peace offerings to God. We repent. We say, Lord, you know, we we, we, we repent. That's what we do. And in his goodness and his mercy, he's faithful to forgive us. What we do, we praise him for that. We show reverence for that. We don't care who we look goofy in front of for that. And anybody got something to say, well, God, God deal with them. Because I pressed a little 3,000 Amplified. He said, at this time, being childish was a social stigma and often considered an act of divine judgment. Her failure to produce a child prevented Saul's line from even from being continued through David. Saul was cut off anyway. So this was a divine judgment on her bloodline anyway. But for her to put her mouth on something, Oh, that's good, Holy Spirit. So you telling me when I worship God, I be obedient to God. I do what God tell me to do. And somebody put their mouth on me, a divine judgment. I ain't got to say, I, I say what it need to be said and I'm going, but God is the one who handles and will fight for you and avenge you in these matters. Not us having to do that for ourselves. We don't have to, Dave, they have to defend himself. He's like, no, I'm going to look stupid. I'm going to look goofy. I'm going to do whatever needs to be done in front of whoever. I don't care. But God ultimately judged her in that sense. Because who are you to try to, that's my worship, that's all he got to give me. Our worship and our praise and our devotion, and our, uh, that's all we have to give to him. So who are we to allow anybody to dumb us down or whatever the case may be because of how they feel? Because, oh, you embarrassing me. Well, you better get on somewhere and quit playing with me. Find you something safe to do because this ain't it. So that was 2 Samuel chapter 6. That was a good one. I love 2 Samuel. I love the book of Samuel, period. But I pray that it blessed you and it spoke to you and that, you know, Holy Spirit, you know, just give you another different type of revelation through his word. So I pray you have a blessed rest of your day, blessed rest of your week, blessed whatever it is you got going on. Okay. In Jesus name. Amen.